Hello and welcome back to Top Grade. My name is Spencer Miller and I'm so excited today to share with you a selection of brand new Canadian books for high school students. These are books for the upcoming fall 2022 season. We've got so many great books to talk about today, so let's get started. A Blanket of Butterflies is published by Highwater Press. It's written by Richard Van Camp with illustrations from Scott Henderson and colors from Donovan Yasiak. This is the story of a young indigenous boy and his grandmother who help a Japanese man reclaim his grandfather's samurai suit of armor. The story is inspired by a real life uh, mysterious suit of armor that appeared in a museum in Fort Smith Northwest Territories, Richard Van Camp's hometown. The book explores the intersections between Japanese and Canadian history and cultures and explores themes of peacemaking and reconciliation. Um, it is absolutely beautifully done. I love the um, book flaps like this on a graphic novel um, and the art inside is just fantastic. It's some of Scott Henderson's best work and features some of the just best and most exciting action scenes that I've seen in a comic book in a long time. Additional background information at the end of the story provides more context about the intersections between Japanese and indigenous histories during World War II which would be a great way to prompt further research into the history of these groups during World War II times. Overall, I think this is a powerful story about the ways that different cultures have blended and intersected and crossed with each other throughout Canadian history. A House Unsettled from Anik Press is a debut young adult novel from author Trin Delaney. This haunted house story is also a family drama and a romance. It explores some of the legacies of oppression and violence left behind by colonization and the ways that black queer love and resistance can disrupt them. The story is about Aisha, a biracial teen who was looking for a fresh start after her father's incarceration and escalating fights with her mother. She moves to her late Aunt Aggie's country home um, where she is trying to get off to a good start. She meets a friendly neighbor and things seem to be going in her favor when suddenly she starts to notice um, some bizarre and unusual happenings around this old house. As she searches to find the source of these occurrences, she also starts to discover some secrets about the past that start to reshape how she views her present. Um, this story that is set within the ever popular horror and haunted house genre for teens um, is a great representation of black and queer identities, uh, which is so important because these identities have so often been left out historically from the horror genre. Uh, the story that is, is also a horror isn't purely a horror. It also does a great job of incorporating other themes of romance and family. And so for that reason, I would recommend it to more than just horror fans, but anyone that is interested in contemporary stories and who are interested in learning more about some of the legacies of colonization in this country. Union is from Orca Book Publishers and written by Sarah Cassidy. This is a novel in verse about navigating past trauma and standing up for what is right. The story is about 15-year-old Tuck, who is left broken and untrusting after experiencing abuse at the hands of his mother's ex-boyfriend. Um, but Tuck starts to um, develop feelings for a childhood friend of his and thus starts to also imagine a future for himself where he is happy and loved. The story also involves Tuck working at a fast food restaurant and being invited to help start a union and learn more about labor rights alongside his co-workers. As Tuck develops a new purpose and finds new love in his life, he starts to heal from his past traumas and abuse. Novels in verse are a favorite of mine to study. They are quick and engaging reads that invite a lot of interpretation and discussion. They're a great way to introduce students to poetry through narrative, that way they still have a bit of a story that they can follow. Uh, and they often explore big ideas with a lot of heart and meaningfulness, the way that Union talks about um, issues of trauma and labor rights, but does so really carefully um, and with a lot of heart. As well, Union is written in almost entirely single syllable words, which is a really interesting um, experimental form of poetry that you can also dig into with your students. Orca Book Publishers also has an excellent lineup of high-low books. These are short, high-interest novels, especially for teens, that feature dyslexia-friendly fonts, um, cream-colored paper, and shorter trim sizes, um, and other features built right into the publishing of the book to make them more accessible to dyslexic readers and other striving readers. Um, they publish a variety of genres and with 
that cover a whole bunch of different themes so you can find the right fit for your students. Um, they have four new books in their high-low lineup this fall, and I want to give you a quick one-line blurb about each of the stories. Murder at the Hotel Hopeless by John LeKetch is a quirky murder mystery with unlikely friendships. Uh, Counting Scars by Melinda and DiLorenzo is a romance and thriller that's set at a teen reform camp. Final Cut by Marty Chan is a comedic thriller about a bullied teen who plots revenge against his bullies. And Careful What You Wish For by Matab Narsimhan is a Twilight Zone-esque story about a lonely teen who discovers a website that grants all of her wishes. Decoding Doc Gray from Nimbus Publishing is written by Nicola Davison. This is a piece of 90s historical fiction that is a coming-of-age novel um, set in an animal shelter that explores ideas around grief, first love, and growing pains. The story is set in 1997. It's about an 18-year-old named Dot who moves out of her parents' home and is staying on her own in a dank, dark basement suite. Dot is spending all of her time working at an animal shelter because she prefers the company of animals over that of humans. Um, that is until she meets a new co-worker with whom she builds a special relationship and bond um, and Dot starts to kind of open up and reconnect with the people around her. Uh, this story that features an 18-year-old protagonist of course explores more grown-up ideas and themes than you typically see in young adult literature. Uh, moving out, uh, dealing with bosses and co-workers, uh, living on your own, having to make ends meet, um, and, and rebuilding adult relationships with your parents. These are all ideas that um, our students probably haven't read much about before, but certainly might be experiencing soon. And so I would recommend the story, particularly for older students, those who are preparing to graduate and who may even be preparing to move out on their own themselves. Bare Bones and Feathers, published by Brick Books, is a special 30th anniversary edition of National Poet Laureate Louise B. Half Skydancer's debut collection of poetry. This collection of poetry reckons with personal history within cultural genocide. It offers moving portraits of Half's grandmother, her parents, and the people whose pain she witnessed on the reserve and in residential schools. Um, in a, a new introduction to this edition, uh, of course, it, it talks about how many of these ideas explored in these poems have only become more relevant to the national discussion that we were having around residential schools and reconciliation. These poems that have been read and loved for over 30 years are full of dark humor and gentleness and are really full of honest experiences. I recommend that teachers um, spend a lot of time uh, with this book first, read through it, read all of the poems individually, and then find the ones that stuck out to you, the ones that you connected with, uh, the ones that spoke to you or the ones that challenged you, and bring them into your classroom and share them with your students. On Account of Darkness, Shining Light on Race and Sport is published by Tidewater Press and written by journalist Ian Kennedy. Sport history is inseparable from racial history, and this book shines a light on the many challenges that non-white athletes have faced throughout Canadian history by taking a closer look at sports history in southwest Ontario. This is a region with a really fascinating history, um, being a terminus on the Underground Railroad, being surrounded by many nearby First Nations, and being home to many interned Japanese Canadians during World War II. Um, of course, all of these groups were participating and playing in sports. And so this book, one chapter at a time, takes a look at a different uh, non-white athlete from these communities, um, some more famous, some more obscure, to explore the deeper relationships between race and sport in our country. Each of these chapters, you could pull out different ones and they would make a great study in social studies classes. Uh, for example, I particularly enjoyed a chapter all about the sport of lacrosse and how it became appropriated from Indigenous peoples to become Canada's national sport. While this is a challenging read, I would highly recommend it because it covers many of the topics that our students are already interested in, like history, sports, and social justice. And those are all the books that we have to talk about today. Um, on behalf of the Association of Canadian Publishers, I want to thank you for watching. And I also want to thank Ontario Creates for their continued support of the Top Grade program. Visit the new and improved topgradebooks.ca to watch more videos, to see and download book lists, to explore books by grade level, check out blog posts with reading and classroom activities, and more.